of absence, some were never here. For some of us, others have stepped in to fill some of the roles of fathers, grandfathers, uncles, and other important men in our lives. For some of us, God's love fills in the empty spaces our fathers left behind. All of us are shaped by the relationship or lack of relationship with fathers. On this day when we remember what it means to have a father and to be a father or father figure, we recognize the importance of all those who take on the responsibilities of fathering in our communities. We pledge as a congregation to love and nurture the father figures among us so they will manifest the love of God in all that they do. As we gather for worship now, please stand if you are able and join in the call to worship. The words are printed on the screens. We look to the rulers of this earth for leadership, wisdom, and strength. We look to these bodies of ours for stability, fulfillment, and joy. We look to families and friends for love, compassion, and hope. When rulers betray, when bodies fail, and when families disappoint, God offers another look. God will guide us. God's spirit will sustain us. Christ will welcome us home. Come, my sisters and brothers, we are all God's family now. Remain standing if able, and please join me in lifting your voice in praise. We need the purple chalice praise book today purple one, the thin book. It's page 31 is where we'll start. All hail King Jesus. Open the eyes of my heart. on page 39. We're going to do verse 1.
may be seated. As we prepare for prayer this morning, we recognize that there are those in our community who need our continued love and support. We especially ask for prayers for Flo Carroll and her family this morning as they grieve the death of her mother earlier this week. We pray for healing for Tamara Talley, a neighbor of the church who has requested prayer. We also give thanks for healing and pray for continued healing for Betty Higdon, for Beth Thompson, and for so many others who need healing. And of course, we pray especially today for our fathers, grandfathers, uncles, and other father figures who shape our lives. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, on this Father's Day, we are reminded that you reveal yourself to us in your word as Abba, Father, Daddy. You are not just our ruler, but our parent, not just our creator, but our nurturer. Thank you for the tender promise of your loving kindness. We thank you today for the gift of fathers and father figures who guide and enrich our lives. We thank you for the gift of fatherhood in which we are called to reflect your selfless love. We pray today too for all those who want to be fathers and yet have not had that opportunity in their lives and for the many, many men who provide support and nurturing for children as teachers, coaches, camp counselors, ministers, scout leaders, and so many other roles. Bless all of them as they seek to guide children in those many roles. Lord, we also realize that father can be a difficult name to call you for those whose human fathers are abusive, absent, distant, or disappointing. We know that the wounds inflicted by our fathers can run deep and that you are the only father who never turns his back to us. Watch over all of us like the most loving of fathers. We pray through Jesus Christ, remembering the words he first taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
This morning's scripture comes from Mark 4, 26 through 34, the parable of the growing seed. Jesus said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. The parable of the mustard seed. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet, when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything to them. The words of God from the people of God. Good morning. It is so nice to see you this morning. I have been anxiously awaiting your arrival. Let us go to God in prayer. The grass withers, the flowers fade. When the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. Amen. So how many of us have had the experience of coming home from school with a cup, with a bean in it, and some soil? And you're given the task of letting that bean grow. Brimming with hope, you place the cup, in the, the cup of dirt in a sunny window seal. Water it each day, and before long, a green sprout would push up through the ground. Remember? And reach for the sun. I also remember the bean that was placed in a zip-top bag. Remember that one? With a bit of water sealed and taped to the window. I remember that one in the kitchen at home. Watching through that clear bag and how the bean progressed was terrific. It had a little brown stem starting to come up. And then there was a green leaf. You know... I'm not really sure what happened to that bean, whether it ever made it into the ground or whether it was just on the seal to be forgotten. But it was a wonderful experience. A piece of that plant is what we're talking about. It's that tiny little mustard seed that Karen read about. A piece of another plant is started in my house at home. It, too, started in a meager little styrofoam cup. It's called a Swedish ivy. Do you know anything about Swedish ivies? Those in Alcoholics Anonymous, AA, have dubbed it the Bill W. plant because he's the founder of AA, and he had one in his office. And after his death, his wife Lois gave a sprig of it away, and you put it in a little bit of water, and the roots start to grow, and then you replant it, and it grows, and it grows, and it grows. But the more you pull a sample off and give to another person, the more it grows. The plant has spread its joy across the recovery kingdom. And much like AA has spread recovery, the plant has taken over the table in my living room. And if you would like a sprig to plant 
I'm eager to give you one. Mom has one that she planted in the backyard and it's growing wild. So it's not a an, an hard one to keep alive. In our Bible study for this morning, Jesus tells two parables centered around seeds. In one of the parables, Jesus talks about the mustard seed, while in the other, he describes a man who scattered the seeds knowing and trusting that it will sprout and grow. Both parables are not about seeds, but they're about the kingdom of God. The parable of the mustard seed describes the expansiveness of the kingdom, while the other parable, the parable of the man who scatters the seeds, describes our work in building the kingdom. We are called to scatter the seeds. Now, I know when it comes to gardening, and I'm sure Jeannie would correct me, a gardener must not only be concerned about the seed, but they must tend to the soil. They must fertilize the plant, weed the garden, water it, and care for it. You see, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. The sharing of God's word is like a mustard seed. And it's like a mustard seed in a couple of different ways. First, the mustard seed will grow without effort. It's like a plant in a garden. Sure, you can plant it and tend to it, and you can water it and weed it and fertilize it and do all sorts of things to encourage its growth. But ultimately, the growth itself is out of our hands. You see, we're not laboratory scientists controlling every chemical reaction that makes a plant grow. It just happens. It's an act of God. It's entirely out of our control just as how the seeds sprout and the chemicals that take place in it and the reaction in the sun and the air and the water and all of the things that make it prosper. Like that seed, we cannot make anyone believe the gospel. We participate in it in sure. We baptize, we teach, we preach, we reach out in love. We do the planting. We do the tending. We do the harvesting, but God, God does the growing, and that's out of our hands. And as a side note, I'll mention for the grandparents, parents, fathers, especially here on this Father's Day, uncles, all of us, you'll need to pay close attention. Because the day a child is born, God's hand hands you a vast field waiting to be planted and a huge barn full of seeds and instructions to go start planting. Planting that seed of God's word in the child's heart as often as possible. You cannot make that seed grow. That's God's work. But you can plant it and you can plant that you can plant it frequently, and you can pray for the day when God brings forth a vast harvest, a flowering plant. So the kingdom of God is like a seed in that way, but the kingdom is also like a seed that is a tiny gift for huge potential. It is a mustard seed. It is so tiny that it's even difficult to see it. Ray Flowers, a pastor and blogger, tells us that Jesus makes two points in his parable. The first is that God's kingdom starts small. That should seem strange to us because we think of God as being so big. And I'm sure it seems odd to the disciples too. I mean, let's think about it. Here was Jesus, who looked like an ordinary man, proclaiming the kingdom of God had come. Hmm. Wow, that must have seemed something huge for the listeners. But they look around, and what do they see? It's just them and Jesus traveling around teaching people. Think about 12 of them, one of Jesus, 
And how many followers do we have today? Jesus and a bunch of fishermen. They must have felt pretty insignificant, especially given the power of the Romans and all their legions of soldiers. The second part of the parable tells us that God's kingdom may start small, but it will grow surprisingly large. The mustard seed is a very tiny seed that grows into a huge plant. We heard in the scripture that the birds will nest in it. And that's why Jesus used it for this parable. God's kingdom starts small, but it's going to finish strong. We need to keep scattering seeds. For unbeknownst to us, some seeds are breaking open and growing below the ground, even if we can't see them until we start to see that blade or that stalk appear. Listen to the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bid upon the broken hardened, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. And what if you and I are the seed scatterers in the lives of others for the life of the world. It's a big responsibility, right? Have you ever forgiven or reconciled with another or asked someone's forgiveness? It's not very easy. When have you put another's interest before your own? Have you encouraged loved and reached out in compassion? When have you sat with someone who is grieving and say to them, I am here for you? When have you spoken out and worked for justice? When have you given food to the co-op? When have you shared the seeds you have with someone else? And how are you doing that today? What barren ground is waiting to be seeded and planted in your life? Maybe it's your gifts, your passion, your presence, or your concern. Maybe it's the barren ground of racism, violence, and poverty. Maybe it's the barren ground of loneliness, fear, or despair. Perhaps it's the barren ground of grief, pain, or heartbreak. How might we scatter seeds in those places and a thousand others like them? In December 1878, a young Dutch man who wanted to be a pastor arrived in a tiny Belgium village. He had convinced the Dutch Reformed Church to send him on a six months evangelistic mission to see if he was suited for the ministry. He was sent to live among impoverished coal miners. As the young pastor began working, it soon became apparent that he was differed from other pastors. He came from a long line of prosperous and respected pastors. But when he arrived in the village, he was drawn to the plight of the miners he met, to the anger of his landlord. He was drawn to take the linens off of his bed and turn them into bandages for their wounds. 
He began giving away his clothes and his personal belongings, and eventually he moved into a small hovel on the edge of town. And he asked, you are, he was asked, you are descended from a noble family of Dutch pastors. Why do you give away your clothes? And he replied, I am a friend of the poor, like Jesus. In time, he even began to see soap as a luxury and referred to letting the dust cake on his face like the miners. Eventually, the church rejected the young minister's unorthodox ways. His ministry did not conform to their standards. They removed him from his ministry and eventually sent for his father to come and retrieve him from the little hut that he had moved into. To the villagers, he was Le Pasteur Vincent, but to us, he's known as Vincent van Gogh. The experience soured him on the institutional church, but somehow the seeds of faith remained. In his career, Van Gogh painted at least three, no, at least 30 canvases of the parable of the seeds. Critics believe the image of the, sow, of the sower captured by his love for nature, his respect for the peasant, and his love of God. The image of the sower walking into the field casting seed reminded him of all that he saw. And even in his mental illness, Van Gogh understood that the kingdom is sown like seeds in a field. Our work matters, and we have a role to play, but even more significant are the mysterious and incomprehensible purposes of God who brings life and calls us to allow the seeds of the kingdom to pass through our hands into the soil of creation. So the parable today is about the grace of God. And yet we overhear in these compacted stories so much about what we, pertains to human reception of the good news of salvation. There are clues in the plant that grows so large from such a tiny seed. We marvel that birds come to nest in the shade of this spacious dwelling. So shall the reign of God be. Like the farmer, we do not understand just how the reality of sprouting and growing occurs, yet it becomes a harvest of life. And the tree from the seed, spreads out branches to be a place of rest, song, and abundance. Jesus told so many parables because he is the very parable in human flesh. This is the extraordinary under the signs and words of the ordinary. So the hope is in the question, what? Is God's kingdom like? To what shall we compare it? No one answer will ever exhaust the meaning of that question. But the pulse of Jesus' words, his deeds, his death, and his resurrection point to a secret hidden from the distracted, hopeless world, just like that tiny seed in the soil. The pulse is the heartbeat of God, whose rule and reign is here and coming with the incredible speed of mercy. Perhaps the mercy and grace so freely given in this little mustard seed, which is so tiny yet significant. Hmm. Maybe it's like the Swedish ivy. The more you take from it, and give it away, the more it grows and flourishes. Amen.
Our hymn of commitment is number 50 in the red chalice. Nope, in the purple book. Um, if you find that Lawrenceville First Christian Church is where you'd like to make your home church, please feel free to come forward there in this song or speak to Diane and I afterwards. Let us stand and sing. Good morning, beloved family. Oh, I forgot. I brought the wrong paper. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please listen as I read you the words of Dr. Paul Blowers who's a professor of church history at Emanuel School of Religion in Johnson City, Tennessee. These words really touched me and, and made me think, and I would like you to share, them with, to share them with you. Do this in remembrance of me. Entire books and commentaries have been written for centuries on what exactly Jesus means by these words. Scholars who studied the Greek text have said this remembrance is no simple recall. It is an amnesis, a vital remembrance, a rehearsal of and participation in the sacred events of the past. To remember Jesus in the Lord's Supper is not just to recall him, it is to ratify again our covenant with him as he is instituted in the upper room. To remember him is to enter into intimacy with the Lord, who has always and will ever remember us. To remember him is to recognize that he is not distant or remote, that he is not a memory just floating or hovering over us from our past, but he himself is here with us. He is the host of this supper, a reality we need not fully explain in conceptual terms because it is a part of the mystery of faith. This is why communion is such a powerful part of Christian formation. It just keeps happening. Baptism is certainly more exciting but it happens once in the life of the believer. Communion, however, is shared every time we gather. If we let communion become a meaningless ritual repeated over and over again, then soon our own faith becomes a meaningless ritual. Communion, how it, oh, that's, uh, this is the end of this quotation. Uh, by Dr. Bowers. Now this is just Elizabeth saying, let's all remember today why we come together at this Lord's table every Sunday. 
Jesus asked his disciples at the Last Supper to do this in remembrance of me, and he asked, he's asking us that again this morning. All are welcome at the table. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, this church, and the opportunity to come here to worship you. On this Father's Day, we ask you to bless our fathers and father figures here on earth. We also give thanks that you are our Heavenly Father, and we are your children. It is an honor and privilege to gather around this table and eat the bread representing Christ's body broken for us and drink the juice representing Christ's blood shed for us. We want to be worthy, Father, and we ask for strength to live according to your will. Be with us in all that we do. Bless us and teach us to love others as you love us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. For I have received from the Lord what I, have, what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again.
We come now to the time when we give thanks to God for our time, talents, and treasure, and when we commit to give back to God a small portion of the gifts God has given us. This morning, Teresa shared with us two parables from Mark's Gospel, the parable of the growing seed and the parable of the mustard seed. Seeds are important. Even those of us who are not farmers or gardeners understand that we have to plant before anything can be harvested. Today we have the opportunity of planting seeds as we receive our morning offering. What we share, what we plant and nurture can lead to a time of harvest after our ministries grow into maturity, just as the seeds planted in May in our yard will become a beautiful garden of sunflowers later this summer. Let us joyfully plant seeds of ministry as we share our offerings this morning. You can give by placing your offering in the plate at the back of the sanctuary, by using the donate button on the church website, or by mailing a check directly to the church. As we prepare to bless our offerings, let us stand and sing the doxology together. pray with me. Good and gracious God, we offer these gifts as seeds of ministry and as symbols of all we yearn to harvest. May these gifts grow into a bumper crop of God's love as we seek to share your good news with the world. Bless the gifts and those who give them. Amen. Several announcements to share today. Uh, we will have a congregational meeting immediately after worship. Please plan to stay. This will not be a terribly long meeting. The finance and facilities team will meet tomorrow evening at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom, so if you're on that team, be sure to plan to be there. Let's Eat will meet on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. at Oyster Bay Seafood Cafe. Let Anna Harrison know if you plan to attend. We have three camps happening this week, Junior, Chrysalis, and Genesis. If you'd like to send notes to any of these campers and staff or any of the others in upcoming camps, there are cards and envelopes in the t on the table in the gathering space. And of course, we continue to ask for everyone's prayers for our church as we move forward, either on Monday at 6 p.m. or at another time that is convenient for you. We have a number of celebrations. Reverend Peter Yoon had a birthday on June 13th. Patricia Taylor's birthday is today. Happy birthday. Anna Harrison's birthday is this coming Wednesday. Nan Anders has a birthday on Thursday. Angel Ramirez and Angelo Ramirez have birthdays on Friday. Mark and Katherine Jensen celebrated their anniversary on June 15th. And Kim and Jimmy Peoples have an anniversary this coming Friday as well. Any other announcements or celebrations I have missed? In your hands. Hold seeds, seeds of God's giving. Scatter them and let them grow. Know that what you do for the kingdom of God is what God calls us to do. Amen. <laughs> 